What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I happen to have a box, so you know what that means. Yes, another Tackle Warehouse unboxing. Now, this is stuff that I got like a month ago. Uh, it's been sitting over there. I have not got around to unboxing and showing all of you, but it's a lot of stuff I was picking up early for fall. Um, I also got another box of stuff, uh, a few things that I picked up on, what was that, the Tackle Warehouse Labor Day sale? Whatever that last one was, just got that, so that'll be another one coming. And I picked up a couple new reels. Now, I'll be doing that soon. I should be getting those soon. But I need a couple rods for it. So comment down below and let me know, is there a specific rod all of you have been wondering about? I've had a lot of questions on this Shimano Cellus rod, that blue one that you see me use. So if there's a specific uh, budget rod or something around $100, whatever it is, comment down below. And if I see an overwhelming majority of something, I'll pick that one up, so let me know. But uh, enough talking, let's get to looking at what's in here. All right, first off, let's start out with a couple swim baits. You probably are all familiar with that. That is the River to Sea S Waver, the 168 size. That happens to be in the Tackle Warehouse Phantom Trout color. See there, it's kind of see-through, green on top, sort of purple on the bottom. Golly, I'll just take it out so I can show you. That's what it looks like up close. So that kind of that see-through green, sort of an iridescent purple on the bottom. A good natural color with some black flakes. So I really want to focus on throwing this more. I still have yet to catch a fish on a big glide bait. Uh, but I saw these. They had them on sale. So I picked up a couple of these. This color. And then also that one right there. A very natural clear color. That one happens to be the Crystal Minnow. A lot of the swim baits I have are kind of that opaque solid color. So I wanted something like this in those real clear lakes to see what I can get to come up and chase it. Had some good follows throwing that, uh, what was it, the Jerry Rego. Couldn't connect though. Darn, those were some good fish. So a couple River to see S Waver 168 size. And in case you're wondering on the size, six and three quarter inches and just over one and a half ounces. Okay, next up I've got some of the KVD Perfect Plastics. Those are the Caffeine Shad. Um, I've talked about these before. I've heard you know people talk about them. I've never used them. I think I had a pack a long time ago, but soft jerk baits, something I don't throw enough of. And these just have a very cool different look. You know, we're all used to throwing the, the Zoom Fluke, the Super Fluke. But just a different look to it. It's got that awesome coffee scent. Still, I think, the best scent out of anything out there. This is, what, green pumpkin sapphire. So it's green pumpkin. You can see there it's got, like, the blue flakes in it. Really cool color. Good feel to them. It does have a split in the belly there. As I can show you, for your hook to go up in. But want to try some of those. Got that green pumpkin sapphire. Got the, of course, watermelon red flake. And then I got a package of just all white. So I know some people are a huge fan of flukes. I don't throw them nearly enough. I threw them earlier this year, and I had a lot of feedback that people wanted to see me throw those more. So got some of those, the Caffeine Shad. I've heard a lot of people talk about them. We'll give those a try. Sticking with the soft plastics, something from X-Zone. This is called the Punisher Punch Craw. I got the black and blue flake color there. That's what that little dude looks like. You can see it's real streamlined, so there's no big appendages sticking out of it. You know, big curly tails going sideways. The punch cross, so it can go straight down through the vegetation when you pull it back out, comes straight through. It's a very sleek, streamlined look there. I got it for the claws. I really like the way the claws look on there. You can see how much they move and dangle. Very cool looking craw bait. Uh, I got some jigs that I thought these were going to fit on, but it's got a pretty big body on it. Um, I'm not sure how that body's going to work. These might be a little bit big for what I was thinking, but I still like them. I think Texas rigged, throwing these around wood, around real thick brush. It's nothing too big or crazy to get caught in there. It's got just a couple little small arms on the sides. I think those will do pretty well. Try them on a jig. If not, otherwise we'll just Texas rig them. Again, those are the X-Zone Punisher Punch Craws. All right, what do we have next? Now, also comment down below and let me know what you think of this view. Do you like me doing it in front of the camera like this and showing you everything? Or do you like it better when we're over on the table and I kind of do my hands in front of the camera deal? Um, I got a little bit different camera I'm trying out here, so hopefully you like this. I thought it was kind of fun just to be able to do this and show you exactly what I'm talking about and go right back to talking. Maybe that's too much Debo talking. Maybe some people like it more. Anyway, these are some Ned Rig heads. These are from Nichols Lures. You've heard me talk about the Pulsator before. Um, they've got the swim jig that I like. Uh, but Nichols Lures, these are the Clint Davis Toadstool Ned Rig heads. Now, I thought the size on it was unique. I'm usually kind of in between 1 8 or 1 16th. These come in 3 32nd. I don't know that I've seen these uh, type come in 3 32nd. So right in between the 1 8 and 1 16th. Um, but what made these kind of unique and I wanted to try them was because... Of course, we've all seen those EWG Ned Rig heads. I use those a lot and like them, but this is just kind of cool. You can see there it's got the little fiber weed guard there, just like a regular jig. It's not super heavy wire, 
but it feels pretty good on there. So I thought, you know what, that's kind of a, an interesting, different new take on a Ned Rig head with the little fiber weed guard. You can see there, it does have a nice little wire keeper on it. I thought they looked pretty neat. We'll see how these kind of compare as far as being weedless to those EWG Flatlands. I've used those for a long time. I really like their stuff. Um, we'll see how these do. Clint Davis Toadstool. Next, no big surprise, I did grab a couple of the Tackle Warehouse rod covers. Now, I know there are a ton of different rod covers out there. Um, these are pretty cheap, and the one big thing I like about them is they have the elastic. As I take one out, I'll show you. As someone who does a lot of bank fishing, taking rods in and out of my car, I like that they have this little elastic strap here. So after you put your rod all the way on, you take this and wrap it around your reel handle. That way, the rod cover doesn't come off. Now, some of the old ones that I have, and I'm slowly replacing those, or just a rod cover, you'd slip it on, but when I'd pull them out of my car, the rod cover would come off, and then I'd lose them in there, and it was just a pain in the butt. At least with this way, they stay on no matter what you're doing, slips the rod on the reel handle. So if you're looking at rod covers, I would highly suggest checking to make sure they have something like this or some sort of Velcro around it to make sure these aren't flipping all around. Okay, next up, with it being fall coming, uh, I wanted to get some more underspins. Now, these are something that I had never heard of before. Eco Pro Tungsten, so these are tungsten head. Notice they come with that nice trocar hook on there. Those things are ridiculously sharp. Also interesting because these are a quarter ounce, but you look at the head and that's, that's absolutely tiny. That's one big advantage of tungsten is it's more dense than lead. So with the same weight, if I were to compare this to a quarter ounce lead head, this is gonna be way smaller. Now I'll take one out and show you. The other thing that I really like is I noticed that it has a stiff wire here. So it's got like uh, the little bead deals on there. Not sure what those are for, but it's got that stiff wire there that I really like. That way, the blade's always gonna be clear down here. I've got some of those where it's like a, this part moves down here, and the blade will actually come up and bang up against the soft plastic. So I like that this has the blade that's gonna be fixed there. Um, overall, good design. It's got a good, stout, sharp hook. Those trocars are ridiculously sharp, but Eco Pro Tungsten Head. I like the way those look. Now these are some kind of cool little things I found. These are for your spinning rods. These are from uh, Norman Lures. Uh, I don't know, they just call them the hook keeper, but one problem with my spinning rods, I always run braid to a leader. So unlike having like a stretchy mono on here, I usually put it on my, my hook keeper, as you can see here. But when I take it in and out of my car, it's so rigid right there, it just falls out. So with these, you just take your uh, reel, slip it over where your reel goes there, and it's got a rubber kind of stretchy give deal to it. Put your hook up in there like that and it keeps it completely secure so that way when i'm moving these around or carrying them around that hook doesn't accidentally slip out of the hook holder stays in there i like them um, i've had that issue carrying spinning reels around of the lure falling off it's just a little thing but i find that they help so some uh, some norman lures hook keepers okay next up of course you can't talk about fall especially late fall without talking about some jerk baits these are the six cents provoke this happens to be the Chrome Threadfin Shad. Got a few of these. If you remember my videos from earlier this year, I had some great luck on the Sixth Sense Provoke, and I was not hesitant at all about buying a few more. So you can see there are good chrome color on the sides to it, but up top it's kind of a translucent. Bottom is sort of opaque. Yeah, pretty opaque, I guess. So just kind of an interesting color all around. The thing that I really like about the Sixth Sense stuff is they have such good hard baits, you don't have to worry about replacing hooks on them. All of their lures come with nice, good, sharp, those happen to be EWG hooks, which is nice, especially if you're someone that hates to change out hooks. Um, the six cent stuff, I would say is middle of the road. It's not the most expensive, but it's not the cheapest, but they come with good hooks. I also got the ghost bone color. You can see they're kind of a cool color, more of an opaque color to it. Green up top into a blue, pretty much an all white, kind of reflective white on the bottom. Good solid color and low light. And these are all suspending. As you get later into fall, suspending jerk baits are huge because it's going to do that cutting action and then just sit right there. And that's when all those bites come. You know, you do a pop, pop, pause, and then pop, or just a pop, pop, pause. And as it's sitting there, that's when those fish just demolish it. Jerk bait bite's fun to get on. I don't get to do it enough from the shore, but from the boat and on drop offs and such, it is such a fun way to catch bass. And this was the, uh, the color that destroyed it for me earlier this year. I had a day catching 30 some fish on that one right there. That is the 4K Shad, so I really like that one. It's kind of similar to that color I just showed you. I thought the other one, that Bone Minnow, was more of an opaque or uh, more of a translucent, but it's kind of opaque like this. But this one, great solid color. That one destroyed it for me earlier this year. So six cents provoke, six cents provoke. Great jerk baits. Uh, I like them. I would definitely recommend them for you all out there. Check them out.
All right, next, a few finesse jigs. I have to thank, uh, of course, Randizzle for getting me turned on to the finesse jig game. Now, um, I was a big fan of swimming a jig or flipping a jig around, you know, uh, wood, timber, that kind of stuff. But I never really got big into the finesse jig game. And it's so helpful for bank anglers because I was often uh, using the mistake of going too heavy. So when you're throwing a heavy jig and rip wrap, half ounce, you know, I would hear pros talk about half ounce jig. So I'd throw a jig from the bank half ounce and get it stuck in the rocks all the time. But um, as Randizzle has showed me, it's kind of like a shaky head or a Ned rig. You want to go as light as you can get away with so you're not getting stuck in those rocks all the time. So I picked up some quarter ounce. Now 5 16th has, has been my favorite this year with finesse jigs, but I saw that uh, Z-Man had these cross-eye jigs, a power finesse jig, in a quarter ounce. So I wanted to try it. You know, when you're fishing from the bank in, I don't know, four to six feet of water, it doesn't take long for a quarter ounce lure to sink. So I thought, you know what, if I can get away with using a quarter ounce in rip wrap and get snagged even less than a 5 16th, I think it'll be worth it. Now these have a, a stout hook. Let me take one out, I'll show you. This color they call candy crab, but you can see there a very small finesse little hook on it. Not a very big hook at all, probably right about an inch there is all. So a good, sharp, very sharp hook on it, but stout. It's not super light wire that bends real easy. You can see there it does have that little wire keeper on it there. I know some people like those, others hate them. But it does have that little wire keeper right there. Brush guard is good and stout. I might maybe cut that down a little bit, but it's got the brush guard there. You can see that's why they call them the cross size jig. They're kind of cross-eyed. But a really nice little finesse, compact, power finesse jig, right? It's not a super light wire finesse jig that, you know, you might fish on spinning tackle. It's still got a good solid hook. Easily fish this on your medium heavy. So I got that color there, that greenish candy crawl. Of course, the standard black and blue, that does very well around here in Iowa. And then I also grabbed the natural craw, kind of your black, brown, a little bit of red on it. Natural kind of brownish colors, that one looks good as well. So excited to try those, the Z-Man Cross Eyes Finesse Jigs. Sticking with the jig theme, when I was talking about those 5 16 ounce jigs, it was jigs from Dirty Tackle that I got turned on to earlier this year, that Luke Clausen Finesse Jig. Dirty Jigs has a number of different jigs, um, the way the head shape, the sizes, how big the hook is. So I wanted to try a couple different ones. This is called the Scott Canterbury Compact Flip, and that's a 3 16th ounce jig. That's in Green Pumpkin, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I also got one there in your standard black and blue. Like I said, that always does well here in Iowa. When you look at this one just a little bit different, you can see there it has a vertical line tie. So that line tie is straight up and down instead of being this way like the uh, cross eyes jig was. You can see that over here, how that is a horizontal line tie. This one's vertical. I know some people like one way over another. I don't know that I notice a difference. Uh, both of them work pretty darn well in cover for me. Something like this works a lot better as a swim jig though with it being straight up and down. You've got grass like this, come straight through the grass. So I like this more around grass. So this might be more of a little finesse grass jig and flipping jig when I'm uh, going around grass. You can see there it does have that little wire hook keeper on it as well and also a small hook again about an inch. So very similar to those cross-eyed jigs. Um, just a different head, uh, the way the line tie is there, and it's a little bit smaller. So I figured, you know what, let's try a couple real light ones, real finesse, in case it's finicky or even for the smallmouth guys, a little smaller compact presentation makes a difference. Now the second kind I got from them was the Luke Clausen Compact Pitchin' Jig. So a little bit different than that other Luke Clausen jig that I was using, that finesse jig that had kind of a round shaped head on it. This one's a little bit different and similar more to the uh, the jig that I just showed you, but again, a little bit different head type. Hook looks to be about the same, let's see. Hook is the exact same size there, you can see, same same hook. I don't see any difference in the hook. Weed guard looks to be the same, again, it's just a different head shape. So all of these that I got are quarter ounce, but you can see there, it's got that rounded head with the horizontal line, high, line tie. See the difference there? A vertical line tie over here goes straight up and down in line with the weed guard or the horizontal line tie over here. These actually look really similar to those Z-Man cross size finesse jigs. I like both, we'll see how they do. I got some black and blue in that. Got this color that they call Magic Cross Swirl, I like that. This color they call Okeechobee 420, I like the way that one looks. This one's called Purple Pond Bug, good bluegill imitation. Some dirty chartreuse. And that's it for the finesse jigs. Interested to try these and see how they do. All right, last but not least, some lines. Some line that I've had a number of people ask me about. This is the P-Line. It's a high performance copolymer, but it's a top water. So they say this is supposed to have really good abrasion resistance, really good castability, low memory, but still good knot strength. Now it's a copolymer because they use 
different types of nylon lines as opposed to a monofilament, which is just one single extruded line. I don't know, we'll see how this does. If I notice any difference, if there's just as much stretch as a monofilament. Um, when I was looking at it from the side, it seems to have a lot smaller diameter. I'll take it out here. You can see there, it is a pretty thin diameter. I like the diameter of it. Seems like it's gonna be pretty smooth and easy to cast. Now, the thing with most copolymers is they're kind of a neutral buoyancy, so unless the copolymer specifically says on it, usually they do not float. Uh, like I said, it's kind of a neutral buoyancy. It doesn't really sink fast and well like fluorocarbon, but it doesn't float and stay on top like monofilament. So that's exactly what this is designed for. It's designed to float, fish your top waters on it, but it's supposed to kind of have all the best of both worlds. You know, a, a fluorocarbon is a lot smaller diameter compared to most monos. Mono is going to be a, a, a bigger diameter, but of course it floats. So if you're fishing top water, you've either got to go in monofilament or braid. So this is supposed to be the best of both worlds. Hopefully it's got a good abrasion resistance like fluorocarbon, uh, but casts really well like some of the soft monofilaments. Interested to test this out. Again, the P-Line top water. Oh, and I also forgot, I got the, uh, the Free Tackle Warehouse shirt with it. I got an extra large. I can't wear it. I wear a large, so you know what that means. I'm going to be giving this away. I think uh, I should give that to one of you all. So comment down below. Let me know uh, if you wear an extra large and uh, what your favorite lure is that you saw in the video, something you want to see me use, uh, or if there's something different that you want me to pick up. Comment below and let me know if you wear an extra large. Um, I'll run a comment picker, pick somebody who wears an extra large, and I will send that out to you free of charge. So. Thank you all for watching. Today's subscribe fish and friend is John Kuhn. John, thank you so very much for watching. Kim says you've been watching, and that's uh, that's awesome. I appreciate that. I've never met you, but we're all fish and friends here. So thank you, everybody else that watches and supports my channel. Again, it is all because of you that my channel has done so well. I never thought it would do this well. So thank you all so very much, but I've got to get to editing. So thank you for watching, and until next time.